Hello and welcome to today's family service. And this is a, a special type of service this morning. It is a family service, mainly obviously, for, well, for young and for old. But I just want to say at the very beginning, this morning, because it's a special day today, and over this weekend, it's, as we call, Holocaust uh, Sunday, really, <laughs> where we remembered the awful events that happened. That was many years ago when the awful killing of millions of Jews and many others from other nations took place. And so in this program today, I'm going to show you some of the scenes from a visit we did to Auschwitz and Birkenhof uh, two years ago. I'm just going to go through it. shows just some, obviously, some of the actual scenes, which anyway, uh, so for very young children, it might not be appropriate. So just to say this at the very beginning, I'm going to have one or two songs, and as we look into as we normally do with the service that took place for young people yesterday in Bangor. Just going to start with some of that, and then I'll show you and go through just nothing too graphic in that sense, but just showing uh, part of the visit that we did there, which I was filming at the time, and I'll explain just a little bit, but just gives you the feel. It's Looking at these things, even when you go, it's not something that you want to have a look at, really. And yet it is incredibly necessary because less we forget and repeat. And so as we go um, after some songs with, with uh, Pastor Pauline, just at the beginning here, we're going to look at some of that um, and then we'll go back kind of to the normal. We've got a teaching today this, uh, today on Ruth, this wonderful story of Ruth, which is a wonderful story. And we're going to just do our Bible uh, teaching on that afterwards. So uh, just to begin with a word of prayer. And Lord Jesus, we just thank you that as we look at this picture behind me, that you are the good shepherd. You're the one who loves every one of us and you call us to follow you. And so thank you for that enduring love. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you care for each and every one of us. And so we just ask your blessing today as we do our programme, that we can get to know you much better and we can decide to follow you and seek to do those things that are right and good. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen. So uh, I'm going to go initially into uh, Pastor Pauline's service where she did Vicky's song. Uh, so I thought instead of me playing it this morning, we'll just listen to Pastor Pauline and Pastor George as they come along and do some of that story, uh, some of that song at the very beginning. So, so hopefully the te technology will work and let's go into this this one. So for children and the Victory Bear is just coming to sing three songs with you to help you be on the victory side. So come on Victory Bear, he's coming to sing some new songs and some old songs for you. And I hope he's going to sing Mickey the Monkey's song. I will never leave you. I will hold your hand. I will never leave you and cause you to stand. Shall we sing that while I'm waiting? I will never leave you. Yes, 
Mickey the monkey. We saw him last week and he says hi. He's just come back from America. He's been in Nicaragua there witnessing to boys and girls while they're waiting to have their teeth done and while they're waiting for a checkup. And he'll be with us soon. And Victory Bear is coming now to sing some song. Come on, Victory Bear. Welcome. I will never leave you, Jesus says to you. I will never leave you, and the word is true. I will never leave you, I will hold your hand. I will never leave you and call you to stand. The beginning, God told his saints, Abraham and Moses, when they did the things, Joshua and Peter. when we 
forget our Bible. No time to pray. No time. No time to pray. We forget our Bibles. No time to pray. We will shrink, shrink, shrink. We will shrink, shrink, shrink. You will shrink, shrink, shrink. Forget our Bibles. No time to pray. We will shrink. But when we read our Bible, we pray, we pray, we pray every day when we read our and pray every day we grow, 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 we grow. the temple of the Lord. Boys, come and help us. Girls, come and help us. Build up the temple of, of the Lord. Hallelujah. We're building up. Okay, I'm just going to pause that there now. And in a moment, um, we'll come back and hear the uh, memory verses. But as I mentioned at the beginning, we're going now to have a look at the uh, this special uh, visit that we did uh, two years ago to visit the Oswich and Birkenhau, which is where these terrible things, which we call the Holocaust, took place. And so just to, as a, just to mention, there's any very young children, parents were very young children, uh, it might not perhaps be appropriate, this will be about 15 minutes or so, what I'm just going to go through, it's just, uh, I'm just going to show some captions really of this particular visit and, um, and I'll explain things as we go through. So I'll just go back and share the screen. I think we're still on, so okay. now this is the, as you can see here, now this is at the beginning as we were walking through, we were with a team, we were doing, a, we were doing an outreach in Poland at the time, and so we felt it was important to visit. And this is this, as you can see, we're entering into the gates of Austria. And many people come. The visiting centre is really just as it is. So I'm just going to just move on a little bit to uh, see uh, what's going on. And, uh, I'll show you some of the captions. Now, we did have, as people, when they visit, they have a person who explains what's going on, uh, an interpreter. Now, we have, this is the lady here, you'll just see her, uh, who's explaining everything that's happening. But the problem is that it's very hard to understand her. This is the entrance of the here. So, we just get glimpses of this is the actual um, place where everything took place. And this is the lady now who's given a, an interpreter. I don't know if you'll be able to understand her. It was very difficult. I'll just let you listen to the to do. She's speaking there about what our switch was, and it's terrible as they call it a death camp, because this is where many tens of thousands of people were put to death. And uh, there's nothing that they've done wrong, it's simply because uh, 
what they call the Nazi people who were taken over Germany at that time were just doing these very, very bad and very wicked things. So we'll just have, we'll just let it move on and so we can see it as they go walking towards what I call the barracks and the places where lots of these things happened. And all the way, as you go through, you see pictures like this. And I'll, as this pauses, I'll just show you what this is, and what it says. As you walk in it, this is the camp orchestra. And the camp orchestra had to assemble here to play marches while the prisoners filed past. This was to help the prisoners keep in step and make it easier for them to be counted uh, to and fro as they went to and from their work. So we come now to this set of extermination where people were put to death in these places. This is showing where all the people came from who were brought to these camps. Now, as you can see, I'm just moving on from place to place quite quickly, but obviously, if you want to see more. And as you can see, the captions very often and in Polish, and it says, Those who do not remember the past are condemned to repeat it. And this is the importance of remembering this day in which we've taken off. Um, because it is, we often sing a song, uh, lest we forget if we do forget these things, because the Bible explains that the heart of man is desperately wicked, who can know it, that we are, as, as it says there, we, we repeat the very things that we are, are, are really, really terrible. So it's important to recognize the heart of man, that we can do bad and terrible things if we know and we have a restraint within us to see how bad these things are, that we will not to repeat them and be aware that if we are left to our own devices and our own selfishness, then we can do these things to other people. So these things are warnings to us. Let's just move on a little bit. That is why all, all victims have no and so on. For instance, room with a dead side, the first room, was meant at one uh, time for uh, at least 100 men. Uh, on the other left hand side, there is a Now I will show you in a moment some of the things that are in these places. That's the name for the State Board. You can just perhaps make out here, it says in Alps, which was the largest Nazi German concentration camp, and since 1942 also mass extermination centre for the Jews. In the years 1940 to 1945, 
and that's deported at least 1,300,000 people to Auschwitz. And it just shows you the million, and uh, and there was a Polish people, 23,000 Gypsy people, 15,000 Soviet Russian people, and 25,000 pe prisoners from the other groups. And, uh, and then it talks about how 90% of the victims were the Jewish people, and they were murdered in these places, the, uh, the gas chambers. Let's just move on a little bit now. Now, in a moment, I'll show you some more information. <laughs> This gives some of the details here. In June 1940, this was the beginning of the de uh, deportation of the Polish people, the Nazis sent. These are numbers which are just so hard to understand. 140, 150,000 Polish prisoners of the camp. By half of these people, they died. And in June 1941, is beginning of the deportations of 25,000 prisoners of various nationalities. And then later on in summer 1941. So this is some of the history of the camps and what went on. And you can read again a little bit more of the information of that. And uh, the biggest mass murder in history of mankind. Um, the fact that the figures are just so overwhelming. But then, and then this, either side of these is the actual pictures of the people. I know, if you look at the pictures, I think that each person is a precious life which is known by God. And even though it was such an awful place of death and destruction, Yet, I'm sure many people, because there is nowhere, even in the darkest place, where God is not. And as we sing that song, the Lord will never leave us. And maybe many of these people found their hope in God and in Christ, and they will be in heaven. Uh, the lady explained that the majority of people who came to the camps, were brought in as prisoners. Their normal lifespan, once they entered into the camp, was about three months before they died, either through many illnesses or through the gas chamber. <laughs> Because, like I said, Auschwitz was at one time a death camp and labor camp. But for some uh, Jews, also became uh, inmates in the camp. How? What can you see in this photo? But just uh, after being sent waiting to, for uh, the now, train uh, to arrive, the port of the And you can see this. Again, she's just been explaining where they came from. Many of the people actually died on the trains when they arrived. And most people were totally unaware 
of what was going to happen. They were told all kinds of stories. Let me find some more bit of information, we shall see. This is a model that they made of what happened when the people are lying. That they were using. Just talk now a little bit, huh? We just explain. It's the poison. So these are the tablets people were given. That's the poison pills that they were using. As I say, not tablets, they were poison pills, that's where they were. This is the canisters which contain the cyclone, a pesticide used for killing. Yes, the poison was, a, as you can hear there. This is the human hair. Pesticide, this is. Textiles, clothes. It really is, when you look at these pictures, they do shock you. It's just so tragic, the recognizing the lives that were taken away at this particular, these particular places. Here we are. These were, this was, uh, as you can see there, you, you can hair probably women's this hair. about the amount of human hair. So again, all this is evidence, um, which was brought just to again, recognize the enormity. Many items taken from the people. So many. Just move on a little bit. You go from the one camp, the other which are then there we go now to the other camp. This is a train line coming now into Birka now. What you're looking at here is burned down barracks. They blew them up before the Russians liberated the camp. So this is just the remains. So we're just looking at the different places. You can see the watchtowers. The railway line is now defunct. It's just the uh, just for the memorabilia. The day we visited was very bleak and cold. It was very almost appropriate for the situation. Just then so. Sadness. Um, which hovers over this place even to this day. Uh, Orthodox women that were 
Again, explaining some of the things that happened there, which, of course, was not very pleasant at all, as you can imagine. Uh, let's just move on a little bit more. The uh, found in the gas and chamber a dead body of his wife and small baby. Mm. And this baby was uh, still and trying to drink milk from mother's uh, 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 breast. Mm. Uh, so, uh, because very few didn't die. Uh, and then. For killing rats, lice, and so on. He left for UK, and, uh, but because he was quite sick. Uh, just coming to the one. There was layers of babies, then and uh, then the guys on the top. Just explaining. The guys were climbing on top of the bodies to try and get more oxygen, which was still higher up. And then she was saying about how even in these so-called showers, the people were asking, oh, I left my pills behind, and still didn't know even though the cruelty and everything was around them still not aware that they were destined to die he mentioned there about people coming paying their own ticket from greece to get on the trains thinking they'll get a better seat just incredible incredible deception incredible lie manipulation that was taking place. These are now memorials. I'll switch for now. Again, all the different memorials there, which we were looking at as we were coming to the close of our visit. And we're just going to the last place now. Is, sorry, what is the symbolism of this? Uh, death. From a chimney, the shooting wall, the, the a triangle, everybody was given another a, a, a triangle uh, in various colors. Uh, uh, dead bodies in the gas uh, chamber, coffins, uh, graves, uh, symbols of death. So death. I'll just show you this in a moment. Gate, uh, symbol of Birkenau, gate of death. What do you think on, on the gate? What uh, can you, you see on, on the gate when you compare? Forever, let me, I think we've got it there. Forever, let this place be a cry of despair and a warning to humanity where the Nazis murdered about one and a half million men, women and children, mainly Jews, from various countries of Europe. This gate with gate in office one, what's missing? What's the difference? No slogan, yes? The Arbeit must cry. Because the slogan was only in office one, so never in, in Birkenau, never in, in Monowitz camp, only in office number one. So now it was very cynical slogan, Arbeit must cry, work sets you free. Place of despair. So I'm going to um, 
finish this there. It is, it's quite uh, sad to see all this, but this is why today is remembered as Holocaust Day, uh, this over this weekend, and it's something that is not pleasant to see in any way, and yet it's important to remember these things, that by God's grace, we do not repeat these things. And as we know, some of the things that are going on in our world at this time, how we need once again to cry out to the Lord that God in his grace will restrain the evil that is in this world. We're so grateful that Jesus is with us. And when we turn to him, he cleanses from sin and he begins healing into the lives. And so over this weekend, you may have heard many things about what happened in those days. But the main truth for all of us is that we might turn, we learn these lessons and turn to the Lord. For he is the one, when we yield our lives to him, who can prevent us from doing these awful things again. Because Jesus, as the Son of God, he gave his life for us. Now we're going to enter back to hear some uh, verses from Pastor Pauline, and then we'll just do some of our Bible story. Okay, uh, let me just go back into the screen, and let's just look from there. Whoops. There we go. And we do some memory verses. As I struggled, and Sarah Bear, who's not here, but she texted me and she gave me some ideas. And so this was her, her idea. Don't quench the spirit. Quench means mm, muzzle. And when you've got a, a naughty dog who bites people, you put a muzzle on him so that he can't bark and he can't bite. That's quenching. And this says quench, don't quench the spirit. Because when the Spirit speaks, the Spirit tells us what to do. The Holy Spirit. And that's who he is. And that's why we do not despise prophecy. It's the Spirit of God speaking. And when we look at our story later, I'm going to tell you some good ideas that the Spirit gave to Mary Slesser when she was in Africa. So that's Q. Qu. So the next one will be P. P. Put on the whole armour of God to withstand the devil. And you'll win. Hallelujah. Oh, 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 no man anything except love. Give back what you've borrowed. Pay back if you owe anybody any money. Don't owe anyone's bills. Use what you have to pay your debts and then you'll be free. No. N, nothing is impossible when you believe. Nothing is impossible if you believe. And so if you really, really, really want something, and if you, you can pray and, and say, God, I believe, I believe, I believe, I don't doubt, nothing will be impossible. Don't let anybody tell you it's not possible, because God says nothing's impossible to him who believes. M, M. A merry heart does good like medicine. That's why we sing. And so, if, well, friend, when you're down, you're miserable, start to sing. The wise man built his house upon the rock. Jesus says he would never leave you or forsake you. Start to sing. I will never leave you. Jesus says to you, and a merry heart will be like a medicine to you. L, look, love one another as I have loved you, Jesus said. K, K, keep, keep tight or keep hold of what you have so that nobody can take it away from you. Keep hold, keep hold of Jesus, keep hold of the Bible, keep hold of the things you're learning in Sunday school, keep hold of them. Don't let anybody take them away because they're the things that will make you victorious and strong. 
J. J. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will always walk in the light and will never be in the darkness anymore because he is the light of light. Hallelujah. I, I can, I am the Lord, your healer. Jesus, when you're sick, he wants to make you better. H, her, he's not here, he's risen. Jesus is not on the cross anymore. They buried him, oh, but he couldn't stay dead. Boom, he came alive again. And the angels took the stone away and he came out of the tomb. He's alive today. G, G, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Great, he's great. F, we're feeding on the living bread, the word of God. Living bread, not just bread, the living bread which feeds our spirit, our heart. F, endure suffering as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Yes, you will endure suffering. Some people don't want Jesus. They don't like Jesus. And so they don't like you. Well, that's too bad. We will endure it. D, D, do not despise prophecy. That's when the Spirit of God wants to speak to give you a good idea. K, children, obey your parents. Obey them. They know more than you do. B, be bold, be strong, for the Lord thy God is with you. That's not it, is it? Yes, that's right. Thank you, Victory Bear. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And lastly, A. A. Ask and receive that your joy might be full. Ask God. And then the Holy Spirit will tell you what to, to do, and then the angels will go and do it for you. Hallelujah. Right, Victory Bear, three more songs, please. Okay, Before so we'll we just stop there, Thank and you. we'll just come... Uh, thank you for Pauline just been again being able to refresh us with the memory verses. And here, just before we do our Bible story, is a, a chorus you might remember and know. It goes like this. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life. That's what Jesus said. I am the way, the truth and the life. That's what Jesus said. Without the way, there is no going. Without the truth, there is no knowing. Without the life, there is no living. I am the way, the truth and the life. That's what Jesus said. That's an old chorus, which is always good to remember. And now we're going to look at the story, a wonderful story of Ruth. And it's just so amazing how God can work all things for good. And this is what we can learn in this story as we, let's just put it back up. I think you can see now. Oops, there we go, from the beginning. And the story of Ruth. It's always wonderful to have these pictures supplied by the free Bible images. They're always wonderful for the Bible stories to illustrate, uh, access freely online if you want to tell stories or learn more about this bible just be able as i do just go into that site and you can download many of these stories like what i am using here to teach us today so the story of ruth begins with a man called elimelech and his wife naomi and they had two sons malon and Kilian. they lived in the town of bethlehem in judah and there was a famine in the land, and so uh, Naomi and Elimelech decided, oh, well, it'll be better to go to the country of Moab, which didn't turn out to be a good idea, really. They traveled to Moab. They settled there because the Moabite people did not worship the true and the living God. They worshipped all kinds of idols, and they did all kinds of things which were really well, which were really quite bad. But nevertheless, Naomi and Elimelech went there. You can see how it is. 
because some of these have changed today, but still Israel is there, and there's Moab, which is my like jo uh, country of Jordan today. Well, sometime later, Elimelech died, and the two sons then grew up, and they married the local Moabite women, ladies called Ruth and Orpah. However, again, tragedy struck 10 years after the two sons had settled in Moab, Malian and Kilian both died. And now they had left three widows, Naomi, the two young Moabite daughter-in-laws, Ruth and Orpah. So it was all very, very sad. But then Naomi realized that uh, God had provided food for the people back in Bethlehem. And as some of her belongings and land was still there as inheritance, the three widows together at first packed up their belongings, as you can see. And then Naomi got the two girls together and she began to explain to them what was happening, that she was going to go back now to her home. And she told them, you go back to your mother's homes. You're from Moabite, you're from Moab, you stay here. And the Lord may show you kindness uh, and may God help you to find new husbands. So Orpeth and Ruth, they wept when Naomi um, was saying that she was going to go back. And Orpeth, as you see here, kissed her goodbye. And she decided to go back to her mother's home. We don't know what happened to Orpeth. But Ruth, however, clung hold of Naomi and would not let her go. And Naomi tried to persuade her, no, go back. You can't get a husband if you don't know what's going to happen. If you come back with me, go and, and the Lord will bless you. Go back with all past, said Naomi. But Naomi said these, uh, Ruth said these famous words. She says, don't urge me to leave you, Ruth replied. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. And so she refused to leave Naomi. Obviously, she brought a close relationship with her, but also a bit more than that. Naomi, even though it's been very difficult for her, she had kept her faith. She had kept her trust in God and she had obviously continued to instruct both Naomi and Orpeth in the ways of the Lord. She had kept her faith despite what seemed to be very, very sad things which were happening and happened to her. And so, in fact, when Naomi went back to Bethlehem with Ruth and they were all greeting her and she says, look, don't call me Naomi anymore. Call me Mara because I went away for, but I've come back with empty. In other words, yes, her name meant pleasantness. But she was saying, no, no, it's come very, very bitter. It's come very, very sad for me. So she was very downcast about what had happened. But it's wonderful, you know, when we think things are the worst, we sometimes say that the darkness uh, in the morning passes to the light. And even though we can walk through the valley of the shadow of death, as we sometimes uh, read in Psalm 23, yet we will not fear because the Lord is with us and he brings us through. And that's a great thing. Sometimes when we're going through a dark place, the Lord is bringing us through and he has things, good things prepared for us. Because then in that particular Psalm, Psalm 23, it says, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And that's the uh, promise that we have. So let's just uh, move on to the next slide. I'm just making sure that uh, I want me while I'm just pausing a minute because I'm just making sure that you can see the pictures which I am showing you just now.
There we go. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so let's just move on. So Naomi went back with Ruth and they came back to Bethlehem. And of course, obviously, the visit when Naomi came and they saw how sad Naomi was. The grief and suffering could change her appearance. Sometimes when we go through hard times, it, it can really almost change our appearance. That's why the Bible says a, a, a wounded spirit who can bear. But the Bible teaches us when you go through these, remember that the Lord is with you. With you and God will change your situation as you fully trust in him. So the people were thinking and saying, here, can this be Naomi? And as I said, Naomi, she, she says, don't call me Naomi. Um, oops. Don't call me bit, uh, Naomi, because God has made my life bitter. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. The Lord has brought misfortune on me. And sometimes we can look at things in the sense Naomi should not have really gone there in the first place. So at that particular point, she was just, well, not full of self-pity, but in a sense, that's what it was. She had made the choice. And of course, things had gone wrong. But it's, as we say, it's amazing when we come to the Lord how he can change when we've made mistakes or when we've sinned or wherever has been the background, the Lord can change. And this is what is about to happen. So, so Naomi and Ruth, they arrived. They needed food. So Ruth said, well, let me go into the barley fields to pick up the leftover grain. The poor in the land were allowed to pick up grain that the harvest has left on the <coughs> ground. So Naomi says, OK, off you go. Go on, Ruth, then. And so Ruth began to work and get uh, some grain for Naomi to live in. And Ruth went into the field of a man belonging uh, to Boaz. Now, Boaz was a relative of Naomi's dead husband, Elimelech. When Boaz arrived and greeted the harvesters, he said to them all, the Lord be with you. The harvesters replied, and the Lord bless you. So Boaz was a man who loved God, and which is very important as we see the rest of the story. Boaz noticed Ruth collecting grain with the poor. Who is that person? Woman, he asked the man in charge of the harvesting. Oh, she's the Moabite who returned with Naomi, he answered. She has permission to pick up grain, has been working hard. So Boaz went across to her. He said, stay in these fields with the women who work for me, Boaz told her. I have told the men not to lay a hand on you. When you get thirsty, help yourself to the water jars the men had filled. Because as a stranger and as a Moabite, the fact that uh, Ruth was there, it could have been very dangerous for her. So already Boaz was being protective of her because they were beginning to hear how she was looking after uh, she was looking after Naomi. So Ruth bowed down before Boaz. Why are you treating a foreigner so kindly, she asked. Well, I've been told how you've cared for Naomi, Boaz answered. May God, under those wings you have taken refuge, richly reward you. Now, even though I am lower, then one of your servants, you have spoken kindly to me and put me at my ease. Ruth responded to the kindness of Boaz. At mealtime, Boaz invited her to eat with the other harvesters. Have some bread and drip it in the wine, he said. He offered a roasted grain. Ruth ate all that she wanted. And so when Ruth got up to continued working, Boaz gave secret orders to his men. Let her gather among the sheaves without telling her off. Even pull out some stalks from the bundles and drop for them to gather. So Ruth briskly gathered grain until the evening. And when she took it home to Ruth, fresh the barley, it was a large amount, about 13 kilograms. She brought Naomi the food and that she had gathered from Boaz's field with the other, the harvesters had left. 
Then Naomi asked her, where did you gather the grain today? Who is the man who has been kind to you? Ruth replied, it was Boaz. Oh, the Lord bless him, said Naomi. He is a close relative. We know as a guardian redeemer, he has an obligation to look after you because of, uh, as we do for a relative who is in need. And then, from that point on, Ruth continued gathering grain in the fields belonging to Boaz. She stayed close to the women gathering grain, knowing she'd be safe. She worked hard. And then, in the wheat harvest that followed, she made sure that Naomi had enough to eat because she was keeping a promise. He had made a promise to look after Naomi. And even though Naomi was a, probably quite a sad person to be with, yet she continued to keep her promise to look after her and put her first. Well, Naomi gave um, Ruth some advice. She began to recognize that maybe Boaz would help her even more. So Ruth says to her, my daughter, you must have a future here where you'll be provided. Why don't tonight, Boaz is going to be winnowing barley, put on perfume and dress in your best clothes. And she told Ruth what to do. And Ruth made her way down to the fresh and floor where Boaz was working, making sure she wasn't seen. And then, when Boaz had finished eating and drinking, he lay down at the altar, uh, lay down at the far end of a grain pile. Ruth crept up to him and covered his feet and lay down, just as Naomi had told her to do. Well, during the night, Boaz woke up to find a woman asleep at his feet. Who are you? he asked. I'm your servant, Ruth, she replied. Spread the garment of your garment over me, as you are a guardian redeemer of my family. Now, a guardian redeemer was someone obliged to look after a relative in need. And Boaz was related to Naomi's dead husband, Elimelech. So what she was doing was, again, to preserve the inheritance for Naomi. It's that Ruth really wasn't thinking of herself. She all the time was considering how to help Naomi. Well, when, Bo uh, when Boaz heard what she said, he says, well, the Lord bless you. You have not run after younger men and people know you're a woman of good character. I am your guardian redeemer. But there is another person more closely related than I am. If he is not willing to redeem you, then I will. So Ruth lay at his feet until morning and Boaz filled the shawl she was wearing with grain to take back to Naomi. Boaz went to the town gate where business deals were done. When he saw the garden redeemer who was more closely related to Naomi's former husband, he asked him to sit down with 10 elders gathered as witnesses. Naomi is selling the land that belonged to our relative Elimelech, Boaz explained. You have the first right to buy it. But if you don't want, then I will. Now, when the man who was the closest recognized, he says, well, I cannot buy the land without causing problems of my own estate, came the reply. Because Boaz had mentioned that he would also have to take Ruth as well. He says, OK, no, no, you buy it, Boaz. And so Boaz was able to redeem or to Hang on, let me just go back. So as we explain here, it was a custom to seal a deal on buying property by one party, taking off a sandal and giving it to the other. The guardian redeemer who had first choice on the land took off his sandal and gave it to Boaz. Then Boaz said to the, all the other elders of those that had gathered, today I brought from Naomi the property of Elimelech and his sons Malon and Kilian. I've also acquired Ruth the Moabite as my wife 
You are my witnesses. So Boaz married Ruth, and the Lord blessed them with a son. Women told Naomi, praise the Lord. He has looked after you in your old age. Ruth loves you is better to you than seven sons. Ruth and Boaz's son was called Obed. Obed was the father of Jesse, whose younger son David became king of Israel. The descendant of David was Mary, the mother of Jesus. And so God turned what seemed to be a tragedy around, and he made the latter end far, far better. And so Naomi once again picked up the name that she was called, a joyful, a pleasant lady. And the sadness and the bitterness of all that had happened in the past was wiped away. And that's the wonderful way that the Lord Jesus can change our lives. Many people come to Jesus because there's great need, there's sadness, there's loneliness. There's maybe been very big difficulties. But Jesus invites us to come just as we are. And he changes things around. He is a present help, the Bible says. He is one who is alongside us. And he is able to do more than we can ask or think. Why? Because when we open our hearts to Jesus, he puts the Holy Spirit in us. And the Holy Spirit begins to lead and to guide as we yield our lives to him. But that's the important thing. Jesus has got a perfect plan for all of our lives. He has for you. And he has got a wonderful future. Uh, he says, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you. Plans to bless you. To give you a hope. And Jesus is the one who can do that for each and every one of us. But the important thing is to open up our hearts to Jesus. And to invite him to be our Lord and Saviour. So as we close today, there's quite a few things we've shared today. The important thing is that we do know the Lord Jesus as our Saviour. We know that if anything happened to us, if you, then we would go to heaven. And can I ask you, if you've got the assurance, if anything happened to you, if you died, where would you go? Jesus gives to us and promises us eternal life. And he says, I go. To, in heaven to prepare a place for you. And one day I'm going to come back and receive you unto myself. And Jesus has a wonderful, wonderful future for all who trust him. And the important thing is to open up our lives to him. So we're just going to pray. And if you'd like to pray with us this morning, please just say this prayer. The prayer of asking the Lord Jesus to forgive us for the things that we have all done wrong. Because the Bible tells us all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we ask him to forgive us and invite him to come and live in your life. So let's pray. And simply, we come to you. And so we say, Lord Jesus, I ask you today to forgive me for what I've done wrong. I ask you to come and live in my life. And I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to serve you and love you. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us today. And Trust that the Lord will bless you. We'll be back to normal next week. But I thought today being this special Holocaust day, we've looked at some of the things that happens when people turn away from God and forget him. But when we come to Jesus, he forgives and he puts things as they are meant to be with love and with forgiveness, which is what Jesus gives to us. Okay, well, bye for now. Thanks for looking in. God bless you. Bye-bye.